So you've heard about ConvertKit, right? But is it the right email service for you? What is it that they get right? And what is it that they need to improve? Watch this video to find out. What's up everyone, welcome back and hello. If you are new here, my name is Janelle Allen and I help business owners to create and market online courses. Now in my last video, I shared all of the things that I like about ConvertKit. I also gave you a walkthrough of the platform so that you could see the features and just how to use it. In this video, I am going to share the things that I believe ConvertKit needs to improve. I'm also gonna talk about who I think ConvertKit is for and who it is clearly not for. So hopefully this video gives you a good idea of whether or not you should use ConvertKit for your business. All right, let's jump in. One more thing before we get into the actual review, I want to do a recap of the things that I like about ConvertKit for those of you who may not have watched the first video. So the number one thing I like about ConvertKit is it gives you all of the essential features that you need to start or grow your online business using email marketing. Frankly, there are people who are just starting out as well as people who are running seven and eight figure businesses using ConvertKit. So you can't deny the fact that ConvertKit has what you need to run your email marketing for your business. Second thing that I like is ConvertKit's focus on deliverability. They are all about making sure that your emails make it to your subscribers. Otherwise, what's the point? So that's huge and they're super transparent about it. You can find all of their delivery reports for every single month. That's a big deal. Third thing is their focus on improving the product, whether they're adding the ability to track purchases, to create landing pages, to create products. They are all about keeping the product up to date and just growing with the changes that we see in online business. Fourth thing is those landing pages. So this is really helpful for people who may not want to pay for a separate landing page solution. ConvertKit gives you some simple landing pages that you can start with. Now, does it do all of the things that you might find in lead pages or click funnels? Absolutely not. But it's just a start, maybe it'll get there, and there's power in having the ability to not only save money, but keep your systems in one place. Next thing that I really like is ConvertKit's focus on e-commerce. They're starting to put out features that allow you to sell directly through ConvertKit. So you can add products, you can set up checkouts, and you can do all of that within the system. I also love that ConvertKit's pricing grows with you. You can start free and as your business grows, as your sales grow, you can just scale. You can move into their creator and then their creator pro tiers. And then lastly, I really love ConvertKit's team. It's just at the end of the day, you can have a great product, but if you don't have a great team behind that product, your customers are going to feel it. ConvertKit has an outstanding team and you can tell that they're very dedicated to not only supporting their customers, but helping their customers grow their businesses. So kudos to ConvertKit and their team. So let's talk about the areas for improvement, the things that I'm just not a fan of when it comes to ConvertKit. So number one has to be the dashboard as well as the subscriber tab. Now in ConvertKit, these are grouped into one. In other platforms, you have a distinct dashboard that shows you things like your overall subscriber growth chart as well as where people are opting in from. At least that's the case in Drip. But in ConvertKit, your subscriber tab also has your dashboard with the chart that shows your growth of your people. It also shows your purchases and it also shows your total subscribers. So that might seem like enough, right? Unfortunately, when you go to filter and really get granular 
to see, you know, maybe to see all the details. Of, maybe I just want to see one specific criteria of subscribers. You can't do it. So if I click on all subscribers here in this dashboard, I'm only going to see these five options. I can see the growth of all my subscribers. I can see subscribers opted into form sequences, tags, and products. I can see subscribers within a segment. I can see cold subscribers. Custom fields are nowhere to be found here. Um, it's, you know, products are here, but I can't really look for, I don't think dates are here either. Let's see. No, dates aren't here either. So what does that mean? That means I have to create, I have to do a workaround, right? I have to create a segment and then I can search within that segment. So I have to scroll down, create a segment that has all of the criteria that I need. Conversely, when I was with Drip, I can click on Drip's dashboard and I can see, not only do I see, now this is old data because I no longer use Drip, but not only do I see the number of visitors, Drip automatically tells me the percentage of those visitors who have subscribed and when it comes to filtering, I can filter by date, but also if I go to the people tab, then I can set up um, more complex filters. So I can filter by broadcast campaigns, emails open, clicked, reviews, products. I can filter by workflows. I can create custom filters. I can filter by events. I can filter by custom fields, just so much more. So that is something that I really wish ConvertKit would work on improving. Also at the top of my list for things that I just am not a fan of when it comes to using ConvertKit is that it is a very tag-centric platform. You can tell that it was originally built around using tags. Coming from Drip, you can see when it when you look at my tags, I just had one page of tags. So you scroll down, you've got these tags. Some of these were old tags, but there's just one page that I have to look at when I'm looking for my tags. It's also nicely nested underneath of the people tab, which just makes sense and is easy to find. I can also see the custom fields in their own section underneath of the people tab. However, with ConvertKit, I have had to create a number of more tags in order to do things that I used to be able to do natively in Drip. So it's just a very tag-centric platform. Tags are really the trigger to do a lot of things in ConvertKit. So I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Now, some of these tags, like my purchase tags, those were created before ConvertKit had products and purchases in their system. So I can't really put that on ConvertKit. That's, those are kind of legacy tags that I could actually get rid of at this point. That being said, it's still a hugely tag-centric platform, which takes me to the next thing. Custom fields, frankly, feel like an afterthought on ConvertKit's platform. Things that I can't do with custom fields are, if I am setting up an integration with Zapier, I cannot update a custom field directly through Zapier. I first have to add a form or a tag, again, ConvertKit's very tag-centric, and then select the custom field from within that, which is super frustrating because I end up having to create forms and tags that I don't need. All I need to do is update a custom field. The other thing you can't do when it comes to custom fields is I cannot complete a bulk action to update a custom field. If I scroll down to my subscribers and click on bulk actions, I can only add a tag, remove a tag, add a sequence, remove a sequence, export or delete. There's no mention of custom fields. Lastly, when it comes to rules inside of ConvertKit, you can create a rule and if you add a tag to that rule, 
you can, and you don't have the tag. Let's say you want to add a tag when someone opts into a form and you don't have that tag created, you can create it right then and there within ConvertKit, but you can't do the same thing with custom fields. And so it's just example after example where you can tell that custom fields have are an afterthought and they haven't been integrated into the platform from the ground up. So that is a huge thing because custom fields are just immensely useful when it comes to email marketing. So the next thing would be the limited triggers for automations. You know, inside of ConvertKit, if I set up an automation, I've got one set up here. If I click create automation, I have four different triggers for this automation. Forms, tags, custom fields, or a purchase. I can use any of those as the trigger for bringing people into this automation. But in my opinion, that is in, that's severely limited. And it's limited because ConvertKit doesn't have things like custom events, custom conversions, so on and so forth. What if I want to add based on behavior? That's another limitation that I'll come back to later. Conversely, if you look at what I could do with Drip, as far as defining my trigger, not only can I do so much more, I can set up a trigger based on tags, when someone's lead score passes a certain threshold, links, joining a campaign, finishing a campaign, entering a segment, opening an email, removing tags, so on and so forth, you get the idea. But the other limitation is with ConvertKit, I cannot natively add someone to an automation through an integration with another tool. Whereas again, with Drip, if I click on this arrow, I can add a trigger to an automation based on any tool that Drip integrates with. I mean, I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So if I get a payment in Stripe or I get a payment in Thrivecart, which I use, I can set up an automation and that be the trigger. There's just so much that I can do natively that I wish I could do with ConvertKit. And that takes me to a couple other things. One would be integrations. Frankly, I think this is one of the big losses that ConvertKit has. There's just not enough native integrations. In fact, when I signed up with ConvertKit after being gone for two and a half years, I was really surprised to not see very many new new integrations in the platform. A lot of these integrations were the same ones from two and a half years ago. And I've already showed you the number of integrations that I could use with a tool like Drip. So in my opinion, there's just so much opportunity in this space for ConvertKit to integrate with more tools, particularly for content creators. If you have, or course creators, ConvertKit should integrate with all of the course platforms that are top tier, like Thinkific. We've got Teachable and Podia. We don't have Thinkific. We don't have Kajabi. There's just so much opportunity here. Next, I wish that I could create custom events and goals. And I hate to bring Drip up again, but this is just an example of things that I feel I lost or had to create a workaround for when switching to ConvertKit. So inside of Trip, I could set up a conversion based on behavior. Now that could be a purchase, that could be visiting a link, that could be opting in for something. There were just so many options. And it was easy to create a new custom conversion, name it, set a value for that conversion, and Drip would just go off and do its thing and track that conversion. I could also create custom events. So Drip has default events that I can see in the system. If I click choose an event, there's a lot of default events that Drip is looking for because it's, it's tracking behavior. If I don't see what I want, I can go into rules and create a custom event, which is super powerful because I can then use that event inside of my workflows and automations. But in ConvertKit, it doesn't quite work that way. You have your automations and you can create a, you know, if I go here and create 
an automation. Actually, I'm gonna go back and look at an existing automation that I have. So if you look at events under this automation, you can see that the only options I have are to create events based on tags, products being purchased, a date or a custom field update, but I cannot create a custom event. So in my case, if I wanted to, for example, I wanted to create an event when someone booked a call with me and I had to create a workaround and use purchases to do that. So I had to go into my account and set up that call booking as a purchase with zero dollars. It's just an intro call, so there's no monetary value. And then use that as a trigger. It would have been great to just have events natively inside of ConvertKit. Now, while I'm here, let's also talk about the fact that I cannot use, and because I don't have custom events, I can't use events as triggers. So if I wanna get someone into an automation, they're going to be coming in well, I've hit my max, right? So I can only have five, five triggers. So this is a bad example. If I were able to use events, then that would allow me to do more and not run into that five trigger limitation. So let's just pick a different one since ConvertKit, I maxed out on that one. So this is my new welcome new subscriber workflow inside of ConvertKit. And I have it set up when the custom field updates to true that this person is a new subscriber to then welcome them. Well, again, I only have these four options here. If I wanted to create a custom event and have that as a trigger for a, an automation, I could not do that without doing some significant workarounds. So that's just one frustrating thing about using automations with ConvertKit. I find it to be limiting. Lastly, speaking of limitations, I have found ConvertKit's analytics to be extremely limited. I'm able to see the open rates and the click rates, but I'm not able to really see the source where people are opting in from like I could do with Drip. I'm also not able to see subscriber data that really helps me other than knowing what they've opted in for, what they've purchased. So here's an example of one subscriber's record inside of my account. You can see that there's a lot of scrolling for me to see everything. This kind of goes back to my frustration with ConvertKit's organization and UE. I just think there's a better way to organize this that wouldn't involve so much scrolling. So I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and it gets pretty tedious. Imagine if I had a bunch of tags and segments down here, I would be scrolling forever. But I can scroll back up and see the email history, the automations, the sequences, and the purchases that this person has made. This is someone who just booked a call with me. You can see that this is the workaround I mentioned earlier. I had to set up a form for booking a call and do it that way. So in my opinion, ConvertKit, this is one thing where ConvertKit just has a, a pretty myopic view of subscriber records and analytics. I want to see where my subscribers are coming from, how they're interacting with my site and my products, and just get a, a clear timeline of that subscriber's journey. So who is ConvertKit for? This is an important question. In my opinion, ConvertKit is for three groups. Number one would be content creators. So if you are a blogger, a vlogger, a podcaster, or a course creator, basically if you regularly put out content marketing, ConvertKit is built for you. It's designed to help creators to grow. So definitely feel comfortable using ConvertKit if that applies to you. Secondly would be service-based business owners. Now I'm talking about coaches, consultants, freelance writers, copywriters, videographers, uh, developers, designers. If you offer a service, ConvertKit has everything that you need to send out emails to either your client base or your audience if you have a newsletter. Also, number three would be artists. In fact, 
ConvertKit just recently acquired FanBridge, which is a service for musicians. In my opinion, look, the most savvy musicians have an email list. They are communicating with their audiences directly via email. So this just makes sense. And in fact, they're putting out art. So if you are a musician, if you are a painter, if you are any type of artist that's putting out emails, then ConvertKit is definitely going to support you in the same way that they support the creator class. Now we've talked about who ConvertKit is for, so we have to talk about who ConvertKit is not for. And first up on that list is going to be SaaS companies. If you run a software as a service, ConvertKit, you might be able to get it to work for you, but frankly, it's not the best choice. Maybe going with something like HubSpot, Intercom, Entreport, Customer.io, any of those solutions will probably give you the features that you're looking for. Now, secondly, if you are selling physical products via a store like Shopify, so if you run an e-commerce business and that's pretty much all you do, I don't recommend using ConvertKit. In fact, I recommend using a tool like Drip, which is specifically marketed for e-commerce businesses or ActiveCampaign. That would be another great option for you. ConvertKit simply doesn't have all of the integrations and bells and whistles and advanced segmentation that you're going to want to run your e-commerce business. And thirdly, if you are someone who wants to have advanced automations and integrations right out of the box without doing workarounds, ConvertKit isn't for you. Frankly, it can be frustrating to create workarounds when you want to do things that other apps do out of the box. So if that's you and you're looking for an app that's just gonna give you the functionality you need and you don't wanna spend time learning how to create workarounds or you don't wanna to have to spend the money to hire someone to create those workarounds for you, then ConvertKit's not for you. So what are my final thoughts about ConvertKit? Well, I wanna say that ConvertKit has come a long way since I last used them two and a half years ago. They've grown, they've invested in the product, and it shows. That being said, there's still a lot of work to be done. Frankly, there's too many workarounds. There still feels like I have to create adjustments and workarounds in order to do things that I could do natively, especially coming from Drip. And frankly, I know I can't be the only one who feels that too many workarounds just makes me want to investigate using another tool. So that's something that I would like to not have to do. Also, custom fields, speaking of workarounds, custom fields feel like an afterthought in ConvertKit. And frankly, they are. I was one of the early users of ConvertKit, so it was built very tag-centric. But email marketing has evolved. As someone who hates using tags, it really frustrates me to have to create workarounds and Zapier integrations to update custom fields in the same way that I can easily update tags inside of the system. Also, let's talk about just using the tool. I'm not a fan of the UE. I feel like I have to scroll so often. The organization could definitely be improved. On top of that, it's just a little bit clunky. You know, you have automations and automations. Which one is it? integrations in a weird place, in my opinion. So overall, they could definitely benefit from some user testing and just improving the organization inside of the tool. All right, so for now, you might be thinking, all right, Janelle's definitely not running with ConvertKit. That's not true. I'm sticking with ConvertKit for now because even with all of that, I love the team. I believe in what Nathan Berry and his team are building. I, I really like Nathan and his team, and I think that they are taking this constructive feedback to heart and really focusing on improving the product. 
So I have a lot of faith in the team and that's what's keeping me around. Now, that being said, am I gonna test out other email marketing tools? Absolutely. So I hope this has been helpful. Let me know down in the comments if you are using ConvertKit and if so, what are some things you like about it? What are some things you think they can improve? I would love to hear your experience. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget, no, to subscribe. <laughs>